This is the land of Havilah, Genesis 18. Father, please open our eyes to the scripture. Amen. Yahweh appeared to Abraham in the last chapter. Now again, verse 1. Yahweh appeared to him by the oaks of Mamre as he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. He lifted up his eyes and looked and saw that three men stood near him. When he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself to the earth and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in your sight, please don't go away from your servant. Comment in verse 1, Abraham was sitting in the door of his tent in the heat of the day when Yahweh appeared. We got no description of what Yahweh looked like in the last chapter or what form he took, but this time Abraham, quote, lifted up his eyes and saw three men, end quote. Who are they? The explanation's coming, but to go ahead and give it away now, one of them is Yahweh and the other two are angels. We'll gather as we go along that Abraham knew who they were at first sight. He ran to them and bowed to the earth. It's the first recorded instance of bowing in the Bible. Why would a rich, powerful, distinguished 99-year-old, maybe more powerful than any king in the land, Genesis 14, run up and bow unless he knew who they were? Abraham said, please don't go away from your servant. Clearly, Abraham's glad to see them and wants them to stay. Abraham says, verse 4, now let a little water be fetched. Wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. I'll get a piece of bread so you can refresh your heart. After that, you may go your way now that you have come to your servant. They said, Very well, do as you have said. Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, Quickly prepare three seahs of fine meal, knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and fetched a tender and good calf and gave it to the servant. He hurried to dress it. He took butter, milk, and the calf which he had dressed, and set it before them. He stood by them under the tree, and they ate. Comment. Abraham didn't ask Yahweh, what do you have for me? He thought what he had for them. He got water for washing their feet and invited them to rest and stay for a meal. They agreed, and Abraham brought fresh-baked bread, a tender and good calf, butter, and milk, how awesome was it for Yahweh to appear in the form of a man and stay and eat like a friend? It wouldn't be the last time Yahweh would appear as a man. He did it again in the form of Jesus. Of Jesus, Isaiah prophesied, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9, 6. Christ was God and appeared as a man. At creation, God made man in his likeness and image, Genesis 1.26. So if we were to see God, what form would God take? We should be surprised if he didn't look something like a man, or in this case, when he visited Abraham, exactly like a man. Speaking of the three men, verse 9, they asked him, where is Sarah, your wife? He said, there in the tent. Comment, the all-knowing Yahweh knew where Sarah was, so why did he ask? Yahweh asks many questions, not because he needs the information, but as a signal he's about to make a point. He asked questions of Adam, Eve, Cain, and he'll keep doing it. Abraham answered him that Sarah was in the tent. Yahweh says, verse 10, He said, I will certainly return to you about this time next year, and behold, Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Sarah heard in the tent door which was behind him. Comment. In the last chapter, Yahweh told Abraham that Isaac would be born, quote, at this season next year. Here he says, about this time next year, which means very little time has passed since Yahweh's last visit. It's nice when a prophecy has a time stamp. Abraham knows when to expect it. Sarah should be pregnant about three months from now. Verse 11. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age. Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. Sarah laughed within herself, saying, after I have grown old, will I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? Yahweh said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Will I really bear a child when I am old? Is anything too hard for Yahweh? At the set time I will return to you, when the season comes round, and Sarah will have a son. Then Sarah denied it, saying, I didn't laugh, for she was afraid. He said, No, but you did laugh. Comment. In the last chapter, when Yahweh told Abraham that Sarah would have a son, Abraham fell on his face, laughed, and asked himself in his heart if it could be possible. Now Sarah just overheard Yahweh saying it herself, 
and she laughed within herself just like Abraham did. She denied she laughed. It wasn't out loud, so she thought she could deny it, but Yahweh knows she did. Yahweh knows what we're thinking. Quote, you perceive my thoughts from afar, Psalm 139, 2, verse 16. The men rose up from there and looked towards Sodom. Abraham went with them to see them on their way. Comment, we don't want our guests rising up to leave on a bad note, such as right after Sarah laughed, but that's what happened. Abraham and Sarah are in the hill country at Oaks of Mamre. Sodom's an estimated 35 miles away. Coming up before Yahweh left, he had another thought, verse 17. Yahweh said, Will I hide from Abraham what I do, since Abraham will surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth will be blessed in him? For I have known him to the end that he may command his children and his household after him, that they may keep the way of Yahweh to do righteousness and justice, to the end that Yahweh may bring on Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Comment in verse 18, Yahweh spoke again of blessing the whole earth through Abraham. This refers to the gospel eventually being spread across the earth. Nevertheless, the promises given to Abraham will not be enjoyed by everyone. They're open to everyone, but not everyone will partake. Not everyone will welcome Yahweh the way Abraham did. Not everyone will want to do what it says in verse 19, which is to, quote, keep the way of Yahweh to do righteousness and justice, close quote. As Yahweh just said, because he knows Abraham, and his plans for the distant future are wrapped up in Abraham, he's going to reveal to Abraham, for the sake of his posterity, what he's about to do. He's going to let Abraham know for our sake. So whatever Yahweh's about to say coming up, he said for us. Verse 20, Yahweh said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether their deeds are as bad as the reports which have come to me. If not, I will know. Comment, Yahweh's still taking the form and personality of a man as if he doesn't already know what's going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. He's getting some very bad reports, he says. We can already sense something ominous, the tense music's beginning to play. Yahweh's patient, but he doesn't allow the tense music to go on forever. Verse 22, The men turned from there and went towards Sodom, but Abraham stood yet before Yahweh. Comment, two of the men turned to leave, but Abraham stood yet before Yahweh. It says in verse 1 of the next chapter that, quote, the two angels came to Sodom at evening. So between verse 22 that we just read and verse 1 of the next chapter, we have all three men identified. The one that's still standing with Abraham is Yahweh, as verse 22 just said, and the other two are angels, as verse 1 of the next chapter says. Yahweh told Abraham in verses 20 and 21 that he's going to go to Sodom and Gomorrah to see about their great wickedness. Coming up, Abraham's concerned about what God might do because Lot's in Sodom and perhaps other righteous men as well. Verse 23, Abraham came near and said, Will you consume the righteous with the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous within the city? Will you consume and not spare the place for the 50 righteous who are in it? May it be far from you to do things like that, to kill the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous should be like the wicked. May that be far from you. Shouldn't the judge of all the earth do right? Comment, since God was manlike in form and personality, and the text even refers to him as a man, let's not be surprised he would listen to human reason. Coming up, let's notice how respectful Abraham is. He knows Yahweh's more than a man. He knows him as God Almighty, Genesis 17.1. Verse 26, Yahweh said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I'll spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, See now, I have taken it on myself to speak to the Lord, although I am dust and ashes. What if there will lack five of the fifty righteous? Will you destroy all the city for lack of five? He said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. He spoke to him yet again and said, What if there are forty found there? He said, I will not do it for the forty's sake. He said, Oh, don't let the Lord be angry, and I will speak. What if there are thirty found there? He said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. He said, See now, I have taken it on myself to speak to the Lord. What if there are twenty found there? He said, I will not destroy it for the twenty's sake. He said, Oh, don't let the Lord be angry, and I'll speak just once more. What if ten are found there? He said, 
I will not destroy it for the ten's sake. Comment. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, Matthew 5.13. Salt is a preservative. There's no telling how many people and nations have been preserved because a few righteous people like Abraham prayed. Verse 33. Yahweh went away as soon as he had finished communing with Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. Comment. It says Yahweh communed with Abraham, which is what's been going on ever since Yahweh appeared to him in verse 1. It's our privilege to commune with God, to speak to Him, and hear back. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, John 10, 27. In verse 33, Yahweh departed. The story picks up in Genesis 19 at landofhavilah.net, Genesis 19. This is the map of Genesis 18. This is the Middle East, the Mediterranean Sea, the location of ancient Canaan, the Dead Sea is 10 miles across at the widest point, Oaks of Mamre here, now modern Hebron, where Abraham had his tent in this chapter. Hebron has a little elevation to it, about 3,000 feet above sea level. Sodom and Gomorrah were somewhere in the valley in which the Jordan River and Dead Sea lie, possibly discovered recently by excavations near the north end of the Dead Sea. Genesis 19 is next.